Soldier Field in Chicago sold out for the 64th consecutive time as the Redskins come to town to play the Bears. This is one of the few places in the NFL where they cheer the weather, but they just did. It's cold and brisk, and it's perfect for football. The Washington Redskins, first place in the NFC East, and they're a team, John Madden, that's taken on new character this year. Well, you know, you think of a Joe Gibbs team, and you think of the highest scoring team in the NFL, you expect them to pass a lot. You think of the posse, the three wide receivers, but they're back to really the Joe Gibbs type football, and that's running. And Ernest Biner is the guy that is really doing the job for him this year. The other thing you think about offense, defense, but the Redskins are playing great special teams. And that, Joe Gibbs says, is the big difference. The Bears will kick off with Kevin Butler. And the Bears, four and one, tied with Detroit. Butler to kick it off. Brian Mitchell and Ricky Irvin back deep. Brian Mitchell about three yards deep in the end zone, and he is dangerous. Mitchell. Mark Rippon, the quarterback, a big one, 6'4", 234. Up front of him, an excellent offensive line. Lachey, McKenzie, Bostic, Mark Slurett. Jacoby now at right tackle and Ron Middleton having a great year as a tight end. Running backs, Ernest Biner is the runner. Monk, Sanders, and Clark. The posse, the wide receivers, although that will change. Terry Orr out of the backfield. Biner on a reverse to Monk. Looked like it was there for a moment, but the Bears reacted in a hurry stopped by Marcus Paul Tim Ryan starting in place of Armstrong at left defensive end McMichael Perry and Dent Roper Singletary and Morrissey instead of Rivera and in the secondary Wolford and Stinson the cornerbacks Carrier and Paul the two safety men second and five the reverse to Monk got five Clark and Monk split wide left Monk was the motion man here is ripping back to throw it to Monk in his hands and out that's a sight you won't see much of no and the sight that you saw before that sight was something we're going to see a lot of and that's the way the Redskins play offensive football they they break the huddle and then they get in a formation and then they shift from that formation to another one and maybe even another shift. Then they put a guy in motion and they finally snap the ball. Watch all the movement they give you before the ball snaps. Third and five. Sanders and Clark wide left this time. Monk in motion. So the posse winds up to the left side. Good Monk. Four yard gain hit by Stinson, not enough for a first down. That's the type of start the Bears want because one thing they know about this stadium is they know the win. So what they did is they kick off, they kick the Redskins into the win. Now they're going to get the ball, get it with the win. Kelly Goodburn back to punt for the Redskins. He's having a good year as well. Johnny Bailey received it to the Bears. They tried to block it. Bailey cut down by Brad Edwards just as soon as he caught it. Jim Harbaugh, the quarterback. He has gained confidence every time we see him. Up front, Thomas Bortz, Hilgenberg, Thayer, Van Horn, and the tight end is James Thornton. Neil Anderson and James Rouse. The two running backs Davis and Waddle start as the wide receivers. First and ten at their own thirty three. Thornton the tight end is to the right. Anderson. To the forty picked up two stopped by Copeland. Steve McMichael, the defensive tackle, with a nice pack on his left eye. Washington defensive line, Mann, Williams, Johnson, and Marcus Cook. 
The linebackers, the ex-Bear, Wilbur Marshall, Matt Millen, the ex-49er, and Andre Collins. Mayhew and Darrell Green, the cornerbacks, Edwards and Copeland. The two safeties. Second and eight. Anderson again. Hit in the backfield. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. He was hit first by Kurt Govea. That's the thing, what Govea did. He was the, the kind of the second down middle linebacker for the Redskins. They start, start Matt Mill, and then they bring Govea in on, on the second down. And what he did is he just penetrated. Boom, he got in that backfield. The offside went to pull. He knocked the offside pullers down, and there was no blockers for Anderson. Third and eight. And now we're blessed with bright sunshine. McMichael again being attended to over on the bare bench. He got poked in the left eye, but he will be back. Third and eight. Oh, yeah, poke in the eye. That just kind of slows you down a while. That doesn't put you out anything. On a day like this, you wouldn't miss anything, would you? Anderson, the intended receiver, incomplete is Daryl Green up to make the stop. Well, I'll tell you, these offenses are kind of starting out a little slowly. It's kind of like everyone's trying to feel everyone out here and see what's going on, and, and you don't feel that electricity yet of, boom, you know, really, anyone really getting after anyone here. Maury Buford back to punt for the Bears. Mitchell back deep for the Redskins. You know, it kind of sounds like the crowd hasn't arrived yet today. Flag on the play. Mitchell gets it out to about the 34 before Dante Jones is down to make the stop. 44-yard punt that really hung up there a long time. Well, that's the that's the area that we're talking about, the Redskins. You know, they, they play pretty good defense. Richie Pettibone's their defensive coordinator. They play good offense, and they've played excellent special teams coach. Excellent special teams, but this is what drives the special teams coach the crazy. block in the back on the return on the receiving team number 47. Bernie Kukar, the referee. Uh, because you know you have a good return man. Everyone's trying to block for him. You get down there and you can't afford those penalties. We have 11:39 left to play in the first quarter at Soldier Field. Nothing, nothing. Back at Soldier Field, no score yet. Steve McMichael, the Bear defensive tackle, not back in the Bear defensive setup at the moment. You know what I think they're doing, Pat, is I think they're working on his helmet over there. Once you get poked in the eye, they usually give him a shield. And if you see the equipment guys down there, I'll bet you that they're putting a shield on his face mask before they let him go back in. Chris Zorich has taken his place. Nothing doing and talking to Mike Ditka and with Joe Gibbs yesterday. They both say that we both do the same things. We play the same kind of defensive setup. We both think we have to run the ball. There's the helmet that they're getting ready for McMichael. And that's the thing. You see that once a guy gets poked in the eye, that assures that he's not going to get poked in the eye again, and it protects the eye that has just been poked. So now that he got the shield on there, he's ready to go again. Second down. Ripping to Monk. Stinson on the stop, but it's enough for a Redskin first down. You know, that's the thing that the Redskins do so well, like you say, is, is they run the ball. Now once you run the ball, then you can fake the run and go play pass and bootleg. And that was a bootleg where you 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 fake the binder, then you hold the linebackers up, and then you bootleg come out a little and throw the ball to your wide receiver. Monk again, spread left. Sanders moves in motion. <laughs> Draw play to Biner. Wolford came up to make the stop. Biner has really been playing well. I know, and every every player and every coach and every offensive guy says that they can't believe what Biner's given. He said, you know, you, they got Gerald Riggs playing behind him, and he said, 
there's no way that we can afford to take Biner out of this game. He's playing so well. The only time Riggs really gets an opportunity is when Biner gets too tired. Second and four, no score. Redskin ball at their own 36. Biner again. Stopped by Tim Ryan playing today in place of Trace Armstrong. Two yard pickup, a little bit shy of a first down. Uh, of course, Tim Ryan's going to have his work cut out there for him because he's playing against jo Big Joe Jacoby, who, if, if if you remember last week, he had such a such a great game against Reggie White on Monday night, and having to line up against Jacoby most of the day isn't going to be a lot of fun for this guy. Now the crowd finally showed up, Pat. Third down, third and two, and now they get into it. with good protection. Come on. I think he was out of bounds. I think one of them called that he was in bounds and the other official come up and says he's out of bounds. What you hear, he has possession. Is he's not pushed out of bounds or is he? Now is that right foot in? The left foot was definitely in. So you have two things there. Was both feet in, that's one thing. Or was he pushed out of bounds? That right foot was right on the line. But see now that one official said he was in. He was spotting the ball and the other official said that he was out. Now they're going to review it. Now you see if you watch this thing and we see the two officials here and we stop it here. This official here was coming to mark the ball. This official says no, that it's no good. So they left it the way it was. And Goodburn is back to punt to Bailey. Bailey has to retreat. Feels it about the 11, fumbled it, got out to about the 16. Dangerous. 50 yard punt. Five yard return. Somewhat fortunate. 829 left first quarter. No score. Those Braves deserve a lot of congratulations, don't they? They sure do. They everyone thought they were gonna fall apart or go away, and they never went away. Harbaugh faked to Anderson. Had a man open. Wendell Davis. Good throw. That was a perfect throw, and you know what happened? Anytime you get your hands too close to your body, then it can hit your pads, and that's what happened to Wendell Davis. You watch him here, he runs a good pattern. See, it's off a of play fake that holds the linebackers in there. Harbaugh has plenty of time, throws a perfect strike, but watch Davis, he gets his hands too close to his body, and the ball hit his hands and his hip pads at the same time. I suspect that we'll see a lot of bear throwing on first down because of the changes the Redskins make in that defensive setup. Thornton was the move man. Harbaugh back to throw it again. Takes out of the pocket by foot. <laughs> Eric Williams also in pursuit. Yeah, we were talking about Harbaugh and how much how much more confidence he has. You can see it when you when you talk to him in person, and then just the way he carries himself on the field, he's a totally different guy than really, he was a year ago. Really is. He just speaks with so much more confidence. Well, I think you know before when uh, Mike Tomzak was here, it was always who should be the quarterback? Should it be Tomzak or Harbaugh and all that stuff? Mike Ditka said enough of that. They got rid of Tom Sack, put him on plan B. He's in Green Bay. It's Harbaugh's job. Now that alone gives a quarterback a lot of confidence. Third down. Man. And Tim Johnson jumped. I'm not sure if they were pulled or not. See Tim Johnson, what's he feel? Well, heck, if I'm this far, I may as well go all the way. Encroachment number 78 on the defense. 
I think that ought to be when you take that big a bite out of the thing it ought to be bigger than encroachment. Why, why do you think the referee who makes the calls in this case Bernie Kukar wears the white hat the rest of the guys wear black hats. I don't know I don't know why but you always have to tell who the head guy is. That's Bernie Kukar. He used to be another guy. I mean he used to be one of those back judges or field judges. Right. He was a field judge and uh, they just moved. This is his first year as a referee so he had to change hats. Hand off to Rouse on third and short. Redskins are indicating they came out with the football. Tim Johnson made the stop with Andre Collins. Hey, one thing, you know, we talk about conservative football. This is a, a conservative start by both these teams offensively. No gain, fourth and one. I think you go back to last year's game. The score was 10 to 9. Mark Rippon, last time they played the Bears last year, threw five interceptions against this Bear defense. So he may have more respect than the Bear defense this year deserves because they're last in the NFC. Delay of the game against the Bears. They'll back him up five yards. Tell you what, that's some tough gum that he punishes. Yeah, he sure does. He works it. You wonder how many times he changes it during a game. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if it if that's the same gum or if it's different gum that he works on the whole game. But that could be a whole lot of gums that he works on. Could be, or just one. Worth investigating. <laughs> Brian Mitchell. Knocked out of bounds by Michael Stonebreaker. 53 yard punt. 10 yard return. No score. Game four also in Toronto at 8 o'clock at night. At Soldier Field in Chicago, first down Redskins at their own 36. Rippon to Biner. Biner into the Bears secondary and around the corner. Flag on the play. Biner knocked out of bounds at about the 36 by Mark Carrier. And I think it's against Art Monk. He was down there, and Art Monk, instead of huddling up where the ball went out of bounds, Art Monk immediately started walking backwards and shaking his head. And usually that's the guy who did it. Now, Art Monk is one of the great receivers that's ever played this game and he's a good receiver but he's also a good blocker. There's a lot of receivers don't even try and block. He does try and block and he's a very good blocker. He's one of those guys Holding you say number 81 on the offense 10 yards. It is Monk. To keep it but you say year after year he's too old he's too slow. He can't play anymore but and he here, sure can. here it is right there. That's what they're talking about. They're calling that holding. You see he has his left hand there when you wear red gloves they're going to catch that one but that was a pretty good block. Did you see what he did. He got that guy he may have held him but he also put him on his back. <laughs> he sure did. Now for guys that don't you know most of them don't even try and block this guy tries to block and is very good at it. First and five Middleton number 87 moved over to the right and a flag on the play. Play a game on the offense. Too much time. I thought it was interesting yesterday when you were talking about all that shifting with Joe Gibbs, and you said, "Isn't it? Don't you get confused sometimes?" And he said, "No, it's very simple." Yeah, it's very simple to him because they have to call one. They call a a shift, and the other they call a stick. So they go from a stick to a shift to a motion. He said, if you know your sticks and your shifts and your motions, it's no problem. Another flag as Biner gets into the secondary. There's a flag before the snap. We have a false start on the right guard prior to the false snap. Five start yard penalty. This time. Five penalties now against the Redskins. 
And that has to be driving Joe Gibbs crazy because they are moving the ball. They have completed some passes. Biner has that big run. That's called back. Then, then they get this penalty here. And Joe Gibbs is saying, what the heck do we have to do? He said that was motion. That was not a false start. However, they were penalized. Finer again, and this time wrapped up by William Perry. Now for an NFL update, let's send you back to our New York studios and Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, at the Silverdome, from 11 yards out, Darren Nelson scores for the Vikings their first touchdown in 11 quarters, and they lead the Lions 7-0. Pat? No score at Soldier Field, Chicago, nothing, nothing, the Redskins and the Bears. 420 left to play in the first quarter, ripping back the throw. Behind Terry Orr, incomplete. You know what the Bear game plan is, and I talked to Vince Tobin about this yesterday. He says, we have to stop their run and make rip and pass. He said, if he has to pass, I don't think he can beat us. He said, you, you got to put him in those predictable positions. Now, this is one. Of course, they got a little help here some, by some penalties. But they have second and long. Now they're third and 15. Last time they played him, they got five interceptions off him. And these are the situations they think they get the interceptions on third and long. And this is third and 15. Rippon semi rolls left. Back across the field to Sanders. Picked up seven yards, not nearly enough for the first down. Stopped by Morrissey and Mangum. And that was just good coverage. He was trying to get Gary Clark deep. He had Gary Clark on a post pattern. Danell Wolford ran all the way with him. That's who he was trying to go to. Good burn back. Done a good job so far. Bailey standing at the 20 for the Bears. Another good kick. Bailey all the way back to the five yard line. And the ball goes out of bounds inside the five at about the two. Nobody touched it, but I think he lost it in the sun. 61 yard punt. That had to turn out better than the Bears could have ever expected. Watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Pat Summerall with John Madden back at Soldier Field in Chicago. 64 consecutive sellouts. This one has been so far sort of slow paced. Yeah, it's kind of been a weird game. There's just been a been a lot of punts. Look what happened here as we watch Bailey. You can tell he had problems with it. He was looking up and whether it was the sun got in his eyes or the wind did something to that ball. But he misjudged it by at least five yards. I know it was five yards away from him, and that was a really turned into almost a 20-yard advantage for the Washington Redskins. Chris Zorich, it looks like another bear got poked in the eye. Harbaugh to Anderson. Perhaps two yards stopped by Andre Collins. You know, the uh, Bears, Mike Ditka said he was going to make some moves this week in his offense and defense. And one of the moves he was going to make is Ron Mattis for Stan Thomas. But then during the week, he said, I'm still going to start these guys. I'm just going to get them in. And now we see Ron Mattis is already in it. Left tackle for Stan Thomas. This is a guy that, you know, after they lost Jimbo Covert, they made a trade from him. They picked him up from the New York Jets. Harbaugh, five yards deep in the end zone. Gets it out of there to James Rouse. And Rouse will have it up for a bare first down. A pickup of 13, stopped by Wilbur Marshall. Yeah, Marcus Cook is down in the field. It looks like he was going for the sack, and, and he went down and hurt his knee. 
You can see right here, Harbaugh is looking for someone. He finds Rouse. He would like to have Brad Muster in there, but that's always been the outlet, the short guy that you go to, that you come back to, and the Bear passing game has been the fullback. That's the first first down for the Bears. Marcus Cook is the injured Redskin. Marcus Cook was injured. He missed uh, he missed the last game. Fred Stokes started in his place. Let's see. Here's 74 right there. He's going against Mattis, who we were talking about. And it looks like someone gets to the bottom of his knees. It wasn't Mattis, but there was someone underneath there that got that left knee as Mattis, as Mattis was blocking him up on top. You can just see, you know, that's that's the worst kind. When you're engaged with one guy and you're playing off him, and then something comes from some other place. You know, John, this is always the way it seems to happen. Joe Gibbs said yesterday in our conversation that we're thin at defensive end. We're deep at tackle, but thin at end, and that's where you get the injuries. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 something when it, it seems to hit one area, it just keeps going back to that area. Now that means that Fred Stokes, number 60, will have to come in and, and play there. He's a, a good pass rusher, and he's had injury problems himself. He has a lot of shoulder problems, and it seems like every time I've ever uh, seen uh, Stokes play, it seems like uh, you know a shoulder has gone out on him. But when he's healthy, he's a good player and a good pass rusher. They're bringing the card out for Marcus Cook. You could see that, you know, as he was going against Mattis there, that that he knew it there. The minute, you know, that he felt whatever that hit that knee, he knew that it was gone. Somebody cut him down from behind. I couldn't see who it was. Well, Neil Anderson, the bear running back, the one that everyone respects so much, was there. With Marcus Cook the whole time. Still no score with just over two and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. Still no score. As Marcus Cook departs. And as John Madden said, as soon as he felt that pressure from behind, he knew it. He's going out there and he gives his, his teammates one thumbs up as he leaves. First down Bears at their own 17. Stokes has replaced Cook. Harbaugh. Pass deflected. I believe by Charles Mann. That's the thing. You know, you know, that's a quarterback's responsibility. Charles Mann is rushing straight up the center. They move him around, and it wasn't him that got it. Williams. It was Eric Williams who got it, who was playing his position. Williams moved outside, a man moved inside. But it's a quarterback's responsibility to find those lanes. He has to find the throwing lanes between the rushing defensive linemen. There's man over the center again. Harbaugh back. Tim Johnson and Charles Mann collapse the pocket. Well, he didn't have any chance on that. It was collapsed from the left and straight up the middle. Watch man there. He's going to go on Hil Hilgenberg. He gives him a slap with the left hand, the right arm over, and he's right on the top of Hilgenberg. But he was the second or third guy in there. Eric Williams and Andre Collins both. Yeah, I think Andre Collins is the first guy there, and man comes over the top. Hey, yeah, that on, on that kind of pass rush, it doesn't make any difference what kind of patterns you have or great plays or anything it's all academic third and 17 Harbaugh gets it out to Anderson 
And Anderson got back to about the original line of scrimmage before man made the stop. With an assist from Stokes. Well, you know the kind of start of the game this has been, Pat. There's only been two first downs. The Redskins and the Bears have each had one first down. This is either conservative offensive football or great defensive football. Buford's kick this time is a line drive. Handled by Hobbs. And Hobbs gets it back into Bear territory, tripped up by Dante Jones. I think this is a good position right here for the Redskins to open it up a little now. You know, they really haven't gotten anything going, and I think that, you know, that maybe just establishing Biner, because knowing Joe Gibbs, that's what he would like to do. He wants to establish his running game. Then once you get your running game going, then you can get play passes and all those other things going. But if you don't get that running game going, it could be a long day. Take to Biner. Ripping for Clark. What an interception by Lemuel Stenson. Clark had a step or two and he just closed the gap. The last time they played, Ripping had five interceptions. Maybe that's the play that they need to bring him to life. Watch well, Lemuel Stenson here. Clark does have a couple steps on him. Stinson just made a heck of a play on the ball. And that was man-to-man -man coverage. Gary Clark, one of the better wide receivers in football, he was out there man-to-man -man with Lemuel Stinson, and that's the guy everyone on this, you know, everyone wants to work on in that bare secondary is Lemuel Stinson. And I'm sure that Gary Clark was thinking, oh boy, I got Lemuel here. I'm gonna get a post and a touchdown, and Lemuel stayed with him all the way. It had touchdown written all over it. Maybe the Redskins should have gone to establishing a run there. Anderson with some room. Flag on the play as Anderson is tripped up by Copeland, but a penalty marker down. They yeah, were talking about the offensive, uh, conservative or great defense. The other thing is these officials here, there have been a lot of penalties that have called plays back. The Bears have just had a big one called back here. We remember the Redskins had a big one called back with Ernest Biner running. Rip holding number 80 on the offense at the line of scrimmage. Half the distance of the goal. Repeat the down. Called against James Thornton. Well, here's Thornton here. Here's who they call it against. They said it's at the line of scrimmage. So it had to happen right there. That wasn't something that happened downfield. You see right there, he starts out pretty good. And then I guess that he held him there as a the ball went by, but I didn't see it. He didn't need a hold to get Anderson outside him. First and 12. And off Mark Green this time. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. That was kind of a touchy call. In fact, both those holding calls, I think, have been a little touchy. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Redskins nothing and the Bears nothing. The Redskins have one first down as we get ready to start the second quarter. The Bears have one first down. Chicago has 15 yards rushing. Washington 29. That uh, usually won't get it done. Oh, and again, you you know, you have to remember those that running that was called back. I think, you know, Biner had a run that we talked about, a big run that was called back. Neil Anderson just had one that was called back on a holding penalty. So they've they've done it a couple of times, and the things that got him were the uh, penalties. This is Darren Lewis. Stopped by Daryl Green. That's going to be real close to a, a, a first down there. In fact, they're going to mark it. But remember, it's only second down. So even if it is short, they're going to get a third down to, to come up with a play. 
You know, sometimes you hope to get a short yardage. You're like third and real short, and I think that's a great time to go a play pass. And in this kind of game, that may be it. You know, we were talking to Jim Harbaugh yesterday, and he said that, that uh, last year they got inside the 24 times and only got one score. And he thinks that sometimes in this game, they're going to have to go for it on fourth down. Now, not here. I'm not assuming that you're saying that on the 20 they would. I'm just thinking that, you know, somewhere you may take a third down situation and think in terms of two plays. This isn't one of them. But if you ever want to take a shot, this is the greatest opportunity to take a shot to, uh, shot to get a quick, easy touchdown. Third and very short. You know, sometimes the center can take the ball and just move it up or right, <laughs> right, well, right there. Just yes move it can. forward <laughs> enough. I think they got the first down right now. Hilgenberg got it. Harbaugh with the quarterback sneak. Red Stokes will be on the bottom of the pile along with Raven Caldwell. But a first down Bears, their second of the day. Yeah, old Hilgenberg got that one. You know, centers, it's funny. They always do the officials put the, such a big thing on marking the ball. And then the center comes up there, and especially, a, you know, a veteran experienced guy like Jay Hilgenberg, and, and he just takes the ball and he sets it out in front. Now, that does two things. One, it picks up a little short yardage for you, and two, it puts that defensive nose tackle or defensive tackle farther away from you. First and 10 Bears at their own 16. Our ball to throw it. To James Rouse, who made the reception. Matt Millen made the stop after a gain of three. I think Harbaugh's uh, getting knocked around a little here, too. He's not getting he sure the, is. the pass protection. Remember on that last series, a uh, man was in there. We saw the, you know, the linebackers, Collins, were coming here. He just doesn't have any time here. He was really getting pushed by Eric Williams. Th uh, Williams took Thayer, the guard, and just pushed him right back into Harbaugh. Second and seven. Harbaugh out of the pocket. Not enough for a first. For about the 28, Monty Coleman made sure Jim Harbaugh stayed down. Well, see, the one thing that you can't do with Harbaugh is you can't give him the lane. See, if we can go here and just stop it right here, you can see that once you get your defenders here and here and he can see that much room, he will always take it for the run. Now, sometimes he can come out here and still throw the ball. See, he gave that pump a little, but when you have that 10-yard cushion, you know that you can always pick up five or six yards. Third and three. So he did get five. Redskins showing a blitz. Harbaugh incomplete. Intended for Wendell Davis. A.J. Johnson was the Redskin defender. And you can see again the the rush is putting the pressure on Harbaugh so he can't hold the ball very long. He has to step and he has to throw it to the short guy and it seems like every time he throws the ball he's getting knocked down or he's getting forced out of the pocket. So far the Redskin defensive line is winning that battle. Brian Mitchell back deep for the Redskins. Buford. Again a good punt by Maury Buford. But Again, also a flag on the play. Maurice Douglas moved before the snap, and so they'll do it again. Yeah, Douglas was the wide guy outside. He's the he's the far right end out there, and he started to go downfield before the ball was snapped. He's lined out way out there in the right. And of course, the two wide guys are the only guys that can go when the ball is snapped. Maury Buford's done an outstanding job putting. This one is not so good. 
Mitchell from behind, but after he was tackled by Morrissey, he got it all the way to the 35-yard line. Eleven fifty-four left to play in the first half at Soldier Field. No score. This game summary is sponsored by Bud Light. Not much has been accomplished offensively by either team. Washington 52 total yards, the Bears 43. Bears three first downs, the Redskins only one. Ernest Biner five carries for 24 yards, so they pretty well kept him in check. And now is the time, you know, instead of hitting that pass, now is the time I think they ought to establish Biner and the running game from here on in. Biner has the ball. Hit right at the line of scrimmage by Singletary. They've got a yard. Of course, if you're going to establish it when you run it, you got to make some yards. But I think that, you know, I think that they tried to get that quick one, and uh, Lemuel uh, Stinson intercepted it last time. So, so you'd think that they would just take it and just drive it, get their running game going. The Redskins get in sync, get something going. Maybe the Bear defense isn't going to let them do that. Second and nine. back to throw it under pressure got it to Biner William Perry in ripping space watch watch 72 there now you know, you always talk about a quarterback feeling a guy coming I will guarantee you that Rippon felt the fridge coming at him and also hurt him because I could feel him coming at him all the way up here. It's a big mistake if he didn't feel him. Yeah, and, and all the fans could see it because that was open field. That was man on man in the open field. Rippon back to throw. Batted away by Carrier. Tended for Monk. Now, Chip Low Miller who is the Redskin place kicker, of course, has got a great leg and is having a superb year. And there he is. You know, you just saw Mark Carrier knock that ball down. I guarantee you, he feels confidence against Mark Rippon. Last time they played, Carrier had three interceptions. Be a 47-yard attempt by Chip Lomiller. And it is good with plenty of room to spare. From 47 yards, Low Miller hits and puts Washington atop the scoreboard 3 0. At Soldier Field, Chicago, Pat Summerall with John Madden, 10 25 left in the first half. Chip Low Miller just kicked a 47 yard field goal to put the Redskins on the board, and he just kicked off. With Johnny Bailey. From about four yards deep in the end zone, breaks out of the pack. Bailey to about the 22. Stopped by Martin Mayhew. See who else was down there? Chip Lowmiller was down there. In fact, he says that, that a lot of kickers kick off and they don't run down into coverage. He said he's one of the few kickers in the game that kicks and runs down into coverage, and that's why he's also one of the few kickers in the league who lifts weights. He said he has to get stronger to do that. I don't know. You know, I mean, I think a lot of that stuff's the bluff, but that's what they say. It's a good idea. Well, he was down there. I mean, yeah. Mayhew made the tackle, but he kind of put his hand on him like, hey, I'm here too. <laughs> Waddle is the man in motion. Anderson hit behind the line by Tim Johnson. Well, these two tackles of the Redskins, Eric Williams and Tim Johnson, are really playing well in there. They're getting penetration. And they're not letting the bear running game get going. I mean, those two tackles are kind of handling the guards in the center, and then and then they'll bring in they'll bring in man and put him over the center. That's Richie Pettibone, who's the defensive coordinator of this team and one of the best defensive coordinators in all of football. He and Mike Ditka were teammates with the Bear. Oh, avalanche, avalanche out there. 
That's off the ball. That was Charles Mann. He got started. I think he loves playing over the center. I think he knocked Hilgenberg, the quarter. Well, watch him. This is mayhem. Boom, you hit the, the poor old center. He has the ball. That hits the quarterback. That's that's a 7-10 split he picked up. Five-yard penalty. Charles Mann played with a bad knee last year. It wasn't what we had seen before, but this year, he's back to the Charles Mann of old. First four possessions for the Bears, and the results, a lot of punts. Well, of course, when you start on your own two and your own five, that's, yeah. that's tough possession football. <laughs> Some bad stuff's happening to you. Harbaugh back to throw again under pressure. Gets it out to Davis, and Davis gets a bear first down at about the 38. They pick up a 13. That's what they need. They need some time. They're not getting a heck of a lot of time. Charles Mann is getting way too much confidence playing over the center. Now Hilgenberg got him. Hilgenberg got that left hand up there. Back in the middle again. Harbaugh's back to throw it again. Out to Anderson again. Harbaugh is hit by Man. And Man really, really does go through there. He won that battle. Watch Man. He's 71. Watch him. He takes the right side of Hilgenberg, goes right through the hands and the arm. Watch Harbaugh just as he throws there. There's Man wrapping him up and putting him to the ground. I'll tell you. I think that Harbaugh, every time he's thrown the ball today, has gone down. Remember, we used to talk to Tom Landry, and he would say, so-and-so's working? Yeah. Charles Mann's working. I know it, and look at the pressure Harbaugh's had so far. Sacked once, hurried four times. He's been knocked down, I think, every time he's gone to throw the ball. Second down. Harbaugh's down again. Wendell Davis made the reception, however. Darrell Green. You know, that has to be their game plan, uh, Pat, is just to knock Harbaugh down every play, even when he throws the ball. Watch Williams come in here. Boom, the ball's gone. Harbaugh ends up down. I think every pass that he's thrown, he's ended up like that. Now, the Redskins, in a couple of these things, they're getting awfully close to being late hits. That was one of them. Yeah, I think once the ball is gone, you have to stop. They give them a step or a step and a half or two steps, but I think they're getting very, very close to hitting them after the uh, ball's gone. Third and four. Our ball back from the shotgun formation. This time, Waddle was the intended receiver. Had it a moment. Jarred loose by Mayhew. Hey, Waddle didn't see that one coming. He was running away from one from one defender and he ran right into another defender. He was kind of shaken up on that play because he didn't see the second guy. That was a sandwich job and you knew the the bread was on the back but you didn't know where the front piece was. <laughs> Buford back to punt again. Brian Mitchell back deep for the wrist. Mitchell is hit. Just as soon as he caught it by David Tate. 31 yard punt, no return, seven and a half minutes left to play in the first half, three nothing Redskins. At Soldier Field in Chicago, Pat Summerall with John Madden, three nothing, the Redskins over the Bears. Think this is not a tough job? I'll tell you, it's tough, but everyone has to look the ball. See how he's looking? Look at this lady right here, she's looking too. Once a punt's in the air, everyone has to look the ball right into your hands, and then right after you catch it, if you're on the field, this is going to happen to you. I think that's probably a punt return, probably the toughest act in football. Ripping to Clark. Good defense. Stinson. Six-yard pickup, but that's good coverage. There's old Jay Hildenberg, number 63 there, and He's trying to figure out how to 
block Charles Mann. He's getting help from everyone, and I think he's probably asking for a little help from his guards or backs. And if they're going to put him, he can't stay. It's hard enough to snap the ball, but then to have to block Charles Mann, they're going to have to give him some help in there. Second and three. That's Biner. He's hit in the backfield by Richard Dent. Richard Dent will wake up a crowd. I tell you, he plays at about six or seven different levels. And here, everything's been kind of quiet. Here's old Richard Dent here. And when he wants to make a play, you can't block that guy. I don't care if it's a run or a pass. That time, Big Lachey comes out. Dent just throws him off, picks up Biner, throws him down. He's capable of playing like that. He's capable of being unblockable. He's one of those guys you don't want to get excited. No, no, no. If he's ever just playing a nice, slow game, you let him play a nice, slow game. Rippin. Clark. Redskin first down. I tell you, I think they're knocking uh, Rippin down, too. It's not Den on that play. Lachey wins this battle. You see Lachey? He's grabbing him. He gets a hold of that left shoulder, and he just holds on. But Dent did get the push on Rippon. You talk about Gary Clark being a, a tough guy. You know, he knows that it's tough going in there in the middle, but he's the guy that always does it for the Redskins. That's only their second first down. Gerald Riggs in place of Biner. Stop by McMichael. You know, one thing, the, the Bears are just aren't giving them any of that running game. I think the, the tackles for the Bears are playing well, too. You know, Biner's been trying to get something in there. He had that one call back by a penalty. He looks like he's hurting there now. But they just haven't been able to get any blocking in there to get any running going. Second and six and ripping back to throw. Deep for Sanders and overthrown. John Gale and Mark Carrier back with him. There is Biner. Right calf or something like that. Yeah, it's the right uh, lower part of the leg. That could be calf, Achilles, ankle, whatever. But it's always a, a good sign when the, when the guy stands up and starts walking on it. That's a good sign. The bad sign is he doesn't have a shoe on. But we, Houston... 28 to nothing over Denver. Third and six. Ripping out of the pocket. Ricky Sanders will have an 11 yard gain and another first down for Washington. Now that is a lot of time there because Ripon Ripon was trying to go watch him he's going to come here and he's going to roll out here now when you do that you try and throw to this side he gets out here and he has so much time he's able to throw all the way back to the back side but watch they've been having trouble with pass protection in the run now watch by rolling out here see he takes this deep roll he gets out here see the time that buys him now he can throw it all the way back across the field that was rigs for no gain no place to go. Gale again. There's Trace Armstrong. He's normally the, the starting defensive left end for the Bears. He's he's on injured reserve. He had a, a, a knee injury. And of course, Tim Ryan, number 96, is playing in his place. And Ryan plays on that other side. They're going to play what they call the bear defense or the old 46. And they're in that now. And Rippin. Intended for Clark. He had to hurry again. As the Bears put on the pressure. What they're doing now, Biner has his shoe back on. So they got a tape job. So it must have been the ankle because they just put the tape job right on over the ankle and here comes Ernest Biner who Joe Gibbs says has been the Redskins most valuable player this year third and ten 
because Viner's not only a, a, a running back, but he's also a receiver. He's also the third down. And he's a very good blocker when he does have to stay in. He's out this time. Ripping to Clark. Now that is what you call timing. Yeah, you know, where a quarterback throws the ball before the receiver makes a break. See, Gary Clark is looking there, and he goes to the inside. Then he just pivots and hooks to the outside, ripping through that ball before Clark ever turned. I don't even know what you would call that pattern. It was kind of a hook and that turned into an out. But he has so much cushion over on that side, he could do whatever he wanted to on that play. Gary Clark could. Here for an 8 out of 15. And a semi rollout again for Ricky Sanders incomplete. Well, Rippin is doing what he said. We were talking to him yesterday, and he said one thing. We haven't been able to get the ball to Ricky Sanders. We haven't gotten the ball to Ricky Sanders. He says we want to throw it to him more today. But there's a guy who's really been a nemesis to Mark Rippin, and that's uh, Mark Carrier, number 20. Seems like wherever Rippin throws the ball, Carrier's there. As you pointed out in the meeting last year, Carrier had three interceptions, three out of the five against Rippon. Mark Rippon says, I don't know Mark Carrier, but I know him well. I've never met him, but I know him well. That's Biner. Got a couple. Jim Morrissey and Steve McMichael made the stop. Well, the Redskins finally on this drive, they've been three for three on third down. That's where they've been having trouble before. And they're getting into this area now that we talked about in the pregame show, the red area, where the closer you get to the goal line, the tougher it is to get the ball in the end zone. Two minutes left to play in the first half. The Redskins lead three to nothing. And they're on the move. Third and eight at Soldier Field, three nothing. The Redskins over the Bears. They're at the Bear 26. Mark Rippon back to throw. Art Monk touchdown. Well, and they did it on the Bears top defender, Danelle Wolford. Yeah, usually teams work on Lemuel Stenson. They got Wolford out there man to man. Art Monk was right after a timeout, after the two minute warning. That's the play they talked about. They got Art Monk out there in that right side. He just runs a streak right on Donnell Wolford, runs right by him. The Redskins on that drive, Pat, were four for four on third down conversion. Low Miller hits the extra point. And with a minute 53 left to play in the first half, it's 10 nothing Washington. Okay, here's Art Monk right here. Here's Donnell Wolford. He's locked into man to man. No help from the safety here. And you see what happens. See, the safeties don't get out there to help. So out there in the left of the screen is man to man. And you see Art Monk right there. He has two steps on Wolford and a perfect pass by Mark Rippon. Johnny Bailey to return the kickoff and gets out to about the 30. 29 yard return by Bailey. There's a guy, Ricky Sanders, who is the fastest of the receivers. They tried to get a couple of him. They haven't been able to. Then they go back to the guy on his left, old reliable Art Monk. You know, it seems like Art Monk has been playing so long, 12 years in this league, one of the all-time receivers, and he never looks any different. You, nope. know, you always expect, well, he's going to slow down this year. He's not going to block. He's not going to be able to get deep, but he still does all those things. Harbaugh out of the spread this time. And has some time. Caught by Ron Morris across the 50. 23-yard pickup. 
There's no huddle. Draw play, Anderson. Anderson. It should be another first down. Brad Edwards came up to make the hit. And the helmets collided. You see uh, Neil Anderson on that play on, on Brad Edwards. Neil Anderson is one of the best backs in the league, but he's one of the best at finishing off a run. In other words, you come up to hit him, he's going to hit you. Neil Anderson always says there's no way that the running back has to take the brunt of it. When you get up there and the guy's ready to hit you, you unload on the hitter. And no one does it better than Neil Anderson. And it looked like Brad Edwards, you see, that's a mistake. He put his head down. And, and if there's most injuries in tackling come in that thing where the head, instead of being up, the head goes down. Hello, second quarter, Cincinnati, seven, Seattle, seven. Anderson got 11 yards, a minute 15 left to play in the first half. That's encouraging. If any injury can be encouraging, Edwards off under his own power. Yeah, but watch this, this blow here and when he hits. And look at how he finishes him off. And Edwards just went back on that one. And Anderson really exploded into the tackle. Terry Hogue has taken his place. Harbaugh. Ron Morris, the intended receiver. Mayhew was the defender with A.J. Johnson back there with him. Harbaugh has a funny throwing motion. He kind of throws like with a stiff shoulder, like he like he's throwing a shot put or something. But he did get that out there to Morris. The the Bears are are, are finally getting their uh, their receivers well. They got Ron Morris back now. They say Dennis Gentry is a lot better. They got the rookie the rookie in there. We're looking at now Anthony Morgan, number 81. Tom Waddle. 87 has been a big and pleasant surprise for him. Second and 10. Harbaugh. Juggled by Davis and now incomplete. Andre Collins hit him and jarred it loose. But since you see that he has the ball, and the ball gets gets knocked out before he comes down. You see, he never really had control of it. He was trying to get control, and the ball hit the ground. That was a good call. I think what, what the, the Bears now have to think of field goal, and they need, for Kevin Butler's range, I think they need about 10 more yards. Third and 10, they're reviewing that last play. A minute. Three seconds left to play in the first half. And then the only thing they could be reviewing, I think, is if it's a fumble because he doesn't catch it. You see, I mean, that ball was hit, knocked out. He never has control coming down. That's an incomplete pass. Got to be. Can't be a fumble, as you say. He never had it. Complete Terry Hogue almost had the interception intended for Gentry. That is what you call throwing into a crowd. There were four Washington Redskin defenders there, and he tried to force it into Gentry. That ball should have been intercepted. Watch this. There's one, two, see three, four white jerseys. We just stop it there. It's amazing. You look at the four guys surrounding the one Chicago Bear. It's amazing that that wasn't an interception. That was a poor decision. Fourth and ten, and they'll go for it. Harbaugh over the head of Waddle, and well over his head. Man, put the pressure on Harbaugh again. Yeah, you think that they probably should, if they were going to go on, on on two down, should have tried to get the first down and get in position for a field goal. Both times they went for a deep one. You see, Jumpy, Jumpy Gathers, Gathers yeah, also. Jumpy Gathers, he grabbed him and could have thrown Harbaugh down, but he figured fourth down, he threw a incomplete pass to heck with it. The Redskins, with 53 seconds left to play, have two timeouts remaining.
Clark across the 40. Picked up four. That rollout has been well. I, I think the uh, first quarter, the Redskins were trying to do more drop back, and they weren't as successful. In the second quarter, they started that rollout to the right, and they've had a lot of success with that, and that's kind of thrown this bear defense a little off balance. This is a Redskin timeout. They have one left now, second and six. Yeah, if you look at their pass distribution to their wide receivers, they've really worked them here. They have three to Art Monk. They have four to Gary Clark, two to Ricky Sanders, and of course, one of these three was a big touchdown pass dart month. So that's one thing that they do. That's called the posse. Those three guys are called the posse. And one thing that Mark Rippins wants to do is distribute the ball amongst them. Forty-two seconds left to play in the first half at Soldier Field. Ten nothing Redskins. Bears have all their timeouts remaining. The Redskins have just one left. Ricky Sanders on a reverse and nothing doing. Picked up two perhaps. Morrissey made the stop. Clock running with 30 seconds left. Don't forget again a reminder the NFL today's halftime report. Scores and highlights. Third and four. Griffin has Biner. And that should be enough for first down. They'll probably use that last time out now. You know, the one thing that, you know, they you always have one play left, and some teams it doesn't mean anything. It's just a give up play. But when you have guys like Gary Clark, and you have Art Monk, and you have Ricky Sanders out there, and you're throwing a deep one from the 50 in the last play, that could be a big one. We've seen it happen so many times. No more timeouts, 13 seconds left to play. A little on the uh, fridge there. They've, the, the Bear defense has really done a pretty good job because the the thing, their number one goal coming into this game was to stop the run. And they've done a pretty good job of that. In fact, if they didn't let Art Monk get away with that third down pass, you know, it'd still be three to nothing. Right. First and ten here. Sanders, 13-yard pickup, stopped by Marcus Paul. They won't have time, I don't think, for another play. That's the end of the first half at Soldier Field. With the score, the Redskins 10, the Bears nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover how substance is taking shape, Cadillac style. Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers, they'll get you noted. The NFL Today Dockers Halftime Report is sponsored by Levi's Dockers. Relax, you're among friends. Welcome back to our studios in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw. As we talked about in the pregame show, and as we take you around the league, you will see there isn't very much scoring happening in the no, National Football League. No, there really isn't. You know, and, and Greg, going back to what John Madden said about inside the, the red zone and, the, uh, and a lot of zone defenses, and I've seen three deep passes thrown so far today. Only one completed for a touchdown, but the zone, in effect, takes takes away the deep threat. In other words, you always have to throw short passes in between it, a little 10, 15 yarders. Yeah, one of those touchdown passes uh, came in the game you are watching from Soldier Field in Chicago. The Redskins lead the Bears at halftime by a score of 10 to nothing. Mark Rippon to Art Monk, 26 yards for the only touchdown of the day there. Meanwhile, they're at halftime at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan. The Vikings leading the Detroit Lions at halftime, 14 to three. Herschel Walker has not seen action yet because of a bruised shoulder. Darren Nelson carrying the ball in the first quarter from 11 yards out scores for the first time in 30 possessions for the Vikings and then on the play action Rich Gannon this is a great job of play action everyone goes to the left with Gannon's fake he comes back against the grain 
And then there you find your man wide open in the back of the end. A well-executed, well-disguised play. Eddie Murray kicked a 47-yard field goal just as the first half expired to get the Lions on the board. It's 14-3 in favor of Minnesota. They have just begun the third quarter in Tampa. Not exactly a scoring outburst here. The Bucks and the Eagles are scoreless as they begin the second half. Vinny Testaverde just 5 of 14 for 55 yards and lost the football here in the backfield and took a nine-yard sack. But Vinny's pass here is picked off. Well, you know, one of the problems with when you hold the ball too long and you stare, one place you don't want to throw it is back over the middle because you're, in effect, bring everyone to your eyes. And when you're in the middle, then you get it intercepted. And the Bucks, Paul, Paul Gruber uh, picked up the ball in the end zone for the touchback. And then Brad Gable picked off by Darrell Fullington here. Gable has been intercepted twice and sacked twice. He is 4 of 9 and 42 yards in the first half. Meanwhile, Second uh, quarter action in Green Bay, the, in uh, Milwaukee rather. The Cowboys lead the Packers 14-0. Uh, Troy Aikman has thrown 13 yards to Jay Novacek for one of those touchdowns. The Houston Oilers, after a week off, are just killing the Denver Broncos. 28 points on turnovers, 35 in all. 35-0 is the score. New England trails Miami. 10-7 in the second quarter. Dan Marino has thrown 25 yards to Mark Clayton. John Stevens, a one-yard TD run for the Patriots. In the third quarter, the Cleveland Browns have just gotten on the board. The New York Jets lead it by a score of 14-7. And halftime in Cincinnati, it's the Bengals 7 and the Seahawks 7. John L. Williams, a 35-yard TD run for the Seahawks. And Eric Ball, a one-yard touchdown. And the NFL Today continues on CBS after this word from your local station. Back at Soldier Field, Chicago, where the Redskins lead the Bears 10 0. And John, it just uh, sort of sort of makes a better example, I guess, of the fact that the Redskins can do so many things so well. The Bears wanted to stop their run. They've done that, but they've still been able to throw it. Yeah, that's that's the thing about the Redskins. They have so many weapons. You know, that if you if you stop Biner, then they always have rigs. If you stop the running game, they always have the posse. You think the guy they want to get the ball to is Ricky Sanders. They want to get the ball to him deep or to Gary Clark, and then, boom, they hit you with Art Monk deep. So what do you think is going to happen here in the second half? What kind of adjustment do the Bears have to make? Well, I think the Bears have to get either get Neil Anderson into the game and, and break him on a big one, and they have to have better pass protection for Harbaugh because every time in the first half, I think every time Harbaugh went back to pass, boom, he was knocked down, and you can't pass on your back. And it seemed like, well, we did have eight punts in the first half. It seemed like every time somebody got the ball, they had the punt. And the other thing that seemed is this is this crowd here. Usually you come yeah. to Soldier Field, and the crowd is in the game, and the crowd is the 12th man for the Bears. But I have the feeling today that this crowd, they just came, and they're just waiting to see what's going to happen, or maybe they expect that the Bears are going to lose to the well, Redskins, you. and they just can't get excited today. Walter Payton strolling around on the Bears sideline. Maybe they'd like to bring him back. Maybe they'd like to bring him down there to get some life going in this thing. Well, you know, everywhere you went this morning and last night and yesterday, because it got very cold overnight, everybody said it's bear weather. Maybe it's not. This is Bailey. Out to about the 10 where he's cut down by A.J. Johnson. 10-0. Well, you know, the other thing is the Bears had terrible field position. They're starting again in terrible field position. They're starting on the 10-yard line. They started once on the 5 and once on the 2 and now on the 10. So they really they don't have any points so far, but they really haven't had any good field position yet. First and 10 on the 10. Washington defense has been very effective. They've already had three shutouts. They're working on another one. Harbaugh to Anderson. Gain of three stopped by Wilbur Marshall. Yeah, that's the thing that Richie Pettibone, we were talking about the Redskins defensive coordinator, Richie Pettibone, and the thing that he does so well is, is take things away. That's the old George Allen theory. You know, George Allen would always say, okay, what do they do the best? And then he'll take that away. Who do they want to throw to on this situation? And you take that away. And Richie Pettibone is a master at taking away what you do best. Well, I think a lot of people, John, you and I included, weren't sure about the Redskin defense, but they sure have been effective. Hardball back to throw it. 
to Waddle. Stopped again by Wilbur Marshall, but a first down there. Yeah, this guy has been an amazing success story really? with the Chicago Bears. They they waved him, and then he comes back, and he's a starter. Remember that Monday night? He has a great Monday night game, and you look at him, and he's not very big. He's not very strong. He's not very fast, but he's one of those guys that just catch anything that is thrown at him, and he gets open. First and ten Bears at their own 23. Anderson close to another bear first down Brad Edwards made the stop I think that's the thing that they have to do I mean you know you know the two things we just saw they hit a ball to waddle and they had good pass protection then they ran to Neil Anderson and they gave him some running room so you know what do the Bears offensively have to do in the second half I think we just saw an example of it the last two plays First and ten Bears. Anderson again makes a good cut right at the line of scrimmage. Outside the 30 to about the 37. Picked up four all on his own. He couldn't he, he was trying to get Copeland to to commit to the right or the left and he, he just wouldn't commit he just stood there so Neil Anderson just kind of fell down. Copeland came to the Redskins as a plan B player ended up as a starting strong safety but he came as a running back. He feels that he could be a running back in the NFL wants to be the Redskins said they would he would be there then they moved him to strong safety and he's played very well. Harbaugh incomplete intended for Wendell Davis and there's Harbaugh on the ground again and I think you know that's the first pass I remember throwing against Daryl Green Daryl Green was a defender there Daryl Green you know probably the best cornerback in the league and the best cover guy and I think if you want to throw a pass to someone you try and stay away from this guy because he is just on, and if you ever beat him, he can catch up with it, too. And I think that could be the first pass that the Bears have tried on Daryl Green. And that's sort of the way it goes in this league. You get a reputation like Daryl Green, and they don't throw it at you. Waddles the man in motion. And Harbaugh out of the pocket. Incomplete. Flag on the play. Sidney Johnson was the defender. Waddle, the intended receiver. Holding number 45 on the defense. Waddle's not sure what it is with that arm, but it looked like as he came down, he came down right on that elbow. You see, there's there's pass interference called on this play. 87 is Waddle. He's the outside guy. See him come in here. And then he works back to the outside. You see, as he dives for the ball, he just comes down on his right elbow. In fact, the first thing that hit the ground was the elbow. First down. Bears have moved it up to their own 42 now. And again, lines up over the center. Harbor Oak goes back to throw. Gets it out to Rouse. Rouse at midfield. Copeland made the stop. Yeah, you wonder why why they don't throw it green. And here's an example. You see, he just gets on his guy, and it's just like a walk in the park. I mean, he covers his guy so closely and and so tight that he just discourages a quarterback. If he ever looks out there, all you see is a number 28. So you don't even, and then you have to go and look and find someone else. Second and three. Anderson shot down in the backfield by Raven Caldwell. A loss of four. I'll tell you, this, this defense of the Redskins is just handling the offensive line of the Bears, and that's where the game is being won. I mean, here on the run, Caldwell's getting penetration. Every time Harbaugh goes back to pass, he's getting knocked down. 
You can see whatever that signal was, uh, number two, that was the wrong one. I think what they do sometimes is they just remind the guy behind them what the snap count is. But uh, Neil Anderson ran to the right there, and he had no chance. There was no nothing chance. there. Third and seven. Our ball again chased out of the pocket. This time he's got some room and he'll get a first down. He gets the Redskin 43 before he's tripped up by Gethers. Yeah, that brings the crowd out. That's what they had to do. Now watch the pressure here. You see it all gets inside. You see man takes an inside move on Van Horn. Now once he takes an inside move there, Harbaugh has to help Van Horn out. He sees him take that inside move. Boom, just go outside there. Because the end, in taking the inside move, the defensive end lost containment to the outside. First and 10 at the Redskin 44. This is Anderson. Stopped by Wilbur Marshall, they say, since he's become a Redskin, left the Bears, that Wilbur Marshall's playing the best he's ever played. Well, you know, I think he finally feels comfortable with this Redskin defense, and he's playing every down. He, they were taking him out on uh, the nickel package. They were taking him out on third down, and Wilbur Marshall always prided himself in being a complete linebacker, and when he didn't play every down on defense, he didn't feel like a complete linebacker. Second down and eight. Again chased out of the pocket. Gets it out to Rouse. Short of a first down. But a gain of about six. Matt Millen made the stop. Yeah, you know, I think the Redskins were so successful in the first half at getting to Harbaugh that they they're, they're, they're starting to go after him too much now, and they're taking taking lanes that are giving him the outside. Man took an inside move, boom, Harbaugh went outside to the right. That time they rushed to the inside and the left, boom, Harbaugh came outside to the left. Third down and three. The Bears at the Redskin 37. Washington leading 10-0. Harbaugh has the pass deflected. Monty Coleman got the hand up and knocked it down. There's a guy that just keeps on going. Monty Coleman, you know, he, he never starts. He's always the, the usually the pass cover guy. Now, when you see Monty Coleman in there in the tight end, you expect him to cover the tight end and not to come on the rush. Here it is, fourth down. You can see Harbaugh wants to go for it again on fourth. He told us yesterday that he thinks that's what they have to do more of. Go on fourth down. Whatever it is, they better get it underway. Yeah, they looked like they just wanted to go for it, but they didn't know what they wanted to go for it with. Harbaugh back to throw. Here comes the blitz. He had nowhere to go, and Harbaugh is down again. Gobea with the heat on Harbaugh. Now, I don't know about wanting to go for it there. I would think maybe punting and changing the field goal position. But watch 54. Here comes Gavea. He comes on a stun. He comes straight up the middle. No one blocks him. Harbaugh didn't have a chance on that one. When it's fourth down, the last thing you want to do is have to throw the ball away here. But if he doesn't, he takes a sack. The Redskins will take over. Eight nineteen left third quarter. The Redskins ten. The Bears nothing. Redskin ball at their own thirty-seven. Spiner is the lone setback. Griffin to Sanders. Yeah, that was an interesting thing, Pat. The, the, the Redskins had their tight ends in the huddle. And just before the ball was snapped, they ran out two tight ends, ran in two wide receivers, and they played that first down play with four wide receivers. 
Redskins have a four wide receiver package, a three wide receiver package, a two tight end package, and a three tight end package. Second and three. That's Finer, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Finer. Maybe he got a yard. William Perry caved in that whole side. Yeah, that's one thing that, that you're not going to do. You're not going to run the ball right at number 72. Watch your refrigerator here. He is going to handle this area here, and you are not going to get into it. Now, you can trick him some, but if you're just going to try and block him and double-team him like that, I mean, that's like a, that's, that's like a kid trying to block him. Third and two. Rippin gets it out to Monk. And Monk gets Rippin. the first down. Ten yard gain. Rippin got it out to Monk while he was backing up. And there you see Monk. He's just coming across on motion. He just goes out to the flat. It's really a poor pass. He has to get turned around, but he does it for the first down. You know, since the start is towards the end of the second quarter there, the Redskins started converting third downs. And I think on that drive that they got a touchdown, they converted every third down, and I think they have so far. Finer. Finer. Over the left. In fact, in fact, that's the difference with the Redskins here today, Pat. They started off and they couldn't convert a third down. They couldn't get a first down. And since that point, they've gone like six for six on third down conversions. Of course, Vince Tobin, he's in the other side there, and he's thinking we have to stop them on third down. Second and eight. <laughs> Gary Clark, the intended receiver, he had a step again. He did, and I think that Rippon had to throw the ball off balance and not at the time he wanted to. You see, Gary Clark, he, he just gets behind Lemuel Stinson here. He has two or three steps on him, and the ball was thrown four or five steps on him. You know, he really did. He pumped and he had time, and, and he just didn't step up. He, he took his left foot and stepped it sideways when there was no reason to. He felt pressure that wasn't there. Third and eight. Griffin got it to Clark, who didn't get a first down. John Mangum made the stop after a gain of six. And that's the first time that the Bears have stopped the Redskins on third down and seven tries. Now the Redskins are thinking of going for it on fourth down. But they're not going to. <laughs> Old Joe Gibbs, he was excited. His son, Coy, is a starting linebacker for the Stanford Cardinal. Joe said last night, he said, I'm going to be up late last night because it was on television late last night. They were playing Notre Dame. This will be a 54-yard effort by Low Miller, and it won't get there. So they'll bring it back to that original line of scrimmage. The Redskins still lead it 10-0. 8 o'clock in Toronto. Here at Soldier Field, first and 10. This is the best position the Bears have started from today. Harbaugh to throw. Got Ron Morris. Inside the Redskin 30, and a face mask penalty is going to be called. And that time, Harbaugh had protection. He had clean feet. There was no one close to him. I think that's the secret. I think they have to give him time. Watch your protection here. Play pass. They keep Neil Anderson pass. in. He helps. Harbaugh has a chance to find his guy, step up, and throw it to Morris. Then right there, we see the face mask. That was just one of those incidental ones as it goes by. Much more as he starts in motion and he's going to run up in across the field. Harbaugh finds him there. 
Now he looks up. Now watch the face mask right there. First and ten Bears at the Washington 24. Anderson to about the 21. Matt Millen made the stop. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Soldier Field, Chicago. Downtown Chicago in the background, just not too far away. 10-0, Redskins over the Bears. Third quarter, four minutes left, four minutes left. Second and seven. About the seven, knocked out of bounds by Coleman and Copeland. I think that's the first time he's thrown a ball to his tight end all day, and maybe that's why he was so wide open. The Redskins take away the things that you do well, so that means that they leave some things open too. Watch on the right of the screen. Watch Thornton. Everyone is coming in with the inside pass pattern, and Thornton just runs to the outside, and he's wide open. First and goal at the eight. And this is where defense gets tough. And it's getting tougher. Harbaugh to Anderson at about the two. Edwards made the stop. You know, the big thing with this drive is, is, is pass protection. Earlier you see a little play pass. Again, Harbaugh has had time. Harbaugh has had time. This is a little pass out in the flat, but he also had time to hit Ron Morris earlier. The offensive line is starting to take control, the bare offensive line. And some of those things that he's doing are inside that 20, that red zone that we're talking about in the pregame show, that as everything bunches in, it just gets tougher and tougher. to about the one foot line the ball might have come loose they're saying that they have the ball you know Neil Anderson is playing with dislocated fingers he has those big gloves on there he said the fingers don't bother him but you don't know if you get that grip on there that you want he got tripped before he ever started his jump the ball comes out but again you don't know when the whistle blew you see, you don't know when. If You see, he still has it here. He's down. Now, I'm sure that the whistle blew right now before that ball ever came out of there. Third and goal. Anderson cuts down. Butler to try the extra point. With a minute 42 left in the third quarter. The Redskins 10. The Bears 7. A minute 42 left third quarter. It's Soldier Field, Chicago. 10-7. Line drive kickoff by Butler to Brian Mitchell to about the 26. Bailey. They're saying it was down. And when you see that line judge 65 when he's pointing to the ground what he's saying is the ball was down he was down the whistle blew. Let's look at that touchdown again that's a lot of action down here. Watch, everyone stay low. The jumpers go over the top. The jumpers jump before Anderson got there. Just watch. Here's the two jumpers. 
54 and 57, Gavea and Millen. You see Gavea, 54 jump. He jumped and he let everything go before Anderson ever got there. Biner. Stop by Carrier, perhaps a gain of 10. You know, when you see Neil Anderson play, you know that he hasn't really broken loose much, but it's just a matter of time until he does. You know that you know that he's going to give you everything. He's going to catch it. He's going to block. He's going to run short yardage, goal line, dive it, do it all. And even though he hasn't really gotten started that way this year, you know it's going to be. Reiner again. Stopped by Morrissey after he got two. Look at number 72 there. How'd you like to get up and have to block that? <laughs> you know, how'd you like to be Raleigh McKenzie, Jeff Bostick? They came out there and <laughs> they had to look at Fridge of that big 72. <laughs> He's big enough to play handball on. I got to try and move him. The field even looks too small for him. I know it. I mean, I mean, he's just so big in there and, and quick and strong and powerful that you don't get any movement backwards on him. Finer again. Picked up six. Morrissey and McMichael. Well, that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Redskins 10, the Bears 7. The day has gotten better. Not just inside the field, but out as well. I mean, who'd be out there sailing when, when a football game's going on? I mean, you don't have any cable out there. There's no antenna. There's nothing to look. The guy must not even know. Where's he been? Under a rock? Maybe you can hear the noise. Not much noise coming out of here today. No. Third down. Ripping behind Monk incomplete. He was open. Dude, that was what the Redskins were doing so well, where they had six for six on those third down conversions. Now the Bears are starting to stop them on third down again, and then they're, they're starting to get some offensive momentum. Bailey back deep for the Bears. Kelly Goodburn. Soldier Field after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Harbaugh back to throw. Deflected and caught. Dennis Dent Gentry came up with the rebound, a gain of 17. But there's a flag back right. there, Pat, and I think it's against the Bears. I think it's in the area where they call holding. And the way everyone's walking back, you know it's against the Bears. Holding, number 75 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. Number 75 is Ron Mattis. He's the left tackle. He's on the far side up there. See 75? Right there, you see, he grabs a hold of Stokes' right jersey, right shoulder, and he just kept a hold of it the whole time. That's what happens. Sometimes if you don't move your inside leg, then you'll move your inside arm and you'll hold. If you have proper footwork and you get that right foot, boom, you jam that in there, then you don't have to use the right hand as much. First and 20. Draw play to Anderson. Anderson outside the 25 to about the 27, tripped up by Daryl Green, a gain of 15. Did you see him get ready? He even changed the ball to get ready to deliver a blow on the tackler. Watch this. He runs through here. He makes a hole. Now he's going to put the ball in his right hand here in a minute. You see him? He switches it there now so he can unload with that left shoulder. 
You know what? If he keeps the ball on the left shoulder, he can't hit with the left shoulder. So he puts it in his right and says, okay, now whap, I'm going to whap him with that one. And then you bring a divot out of your head. That's football. Now we're talking football. You, you change your hands to, and whap. You think he had to think about that, or that's just instinct? That's instinct. That's automatic. That's a football play. Eric Williams stopped Anderson along with Monty Coleman. But that play had everything. Those guys down there, you know when the defensive guys come in the sideline and they stand there like that, they want to see as many first downs as they can get. Because the more first downs the offense gets, the longer the defense gets to rest. Third and one. Third down conversion. The Bears three out of ten. Harbaugh. I think he got it. And I'm sure that Hilgenberg gave him a little. He makes a contact there. Harbaugh made a smart move. Instead of going in, see 57 millionaire, he takes on the right side of Hilgenberg, and boom, Harbaugh goes to the left side. Watch him. Now he's going to, here's Hilgenberg here. You see the contact there? He just goes right to the left of it. See 57 there is on the right of it. And see it, boom, he went right there. First and 10 Bears at their own 31. Harbaugh out of the pockets. Right now for an NFL update, let's send you back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, down in Tampa, Vinny Testaverde loses the handle as he's hit. Seth Joyner recovers for the Eagles. Eagles lead at 13-0 now, and Chris Chandler has replaced Testaverde at quarterback as they begin the fourth quarter. Pat? 10-7 at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Redskins over the Bears. 11 and a half minutes left to play. Now, one thing, the, the Bear offensive line is now getting this Redskin defensive line under control, especially Charles Mann. He's not the dominant player he was in the first half. Pass deflected and picked off by Fred Stokes. And the minute you say that, defensive lineman makes an interception. But that's the second or third time that Harbaugh has had a tip pass, and again, that's his job. He has to find that lane. So the Redskins take over. Yeah, Harbaugh's had three uh, passes bad today, Pat, and he just didn't throw the ball high enough. Watch it. I mean, Williams doesn't block it. The ball just kind of hits Williams in the shoulder. That pass was not only not thrown in a lane, but it was just thrown too low. Looks like it got caught with Stickham or something on it. Rippin has the ball deflected. Tim Ryan got a hand up. That one was deflected. Again, the Redskins have been having success with that rolling out, and it's always been to the right. Every time Rippin has rolled out, he's rolled out to the right. So now the Bears are putting a guy out there and waiting for the rollout. You see him as he starts to roll out? Then Ryan is staying out there, staying in containment. The ball's thrown, boom, he goes up. Second and 10 at the 36. Ripping straight back this time, screen pass to Biner. Down to about the 30, Stinson made the stop. Look at Singletary. You talk about emotion, fired up. Look at number 50 there. Now, yesterday we went to the Bears practice and Mike Singletary wasn't at practice. He was home sick with the flu. This practice came back today and you talk about a guy who's going to give you some inspiration and going to give you some emotion and going to give you some direction. It's this guy right here. Third and four.
Incomplete. Clark, the intended receiver. Sean Gale and Mark Carrier back with Gary Clark. Probably lucky for the Redskins that that ball was thrown short because because Carrier was right there. Gale and Carrier were right there. They had two guys on Clark, and that could have just as well been intercepted. Look at that. You see, by the time he throws it, the guys can converge, and it's lucky that it was short because the two defenders couldn't get back to it. That looked like the last shot out of a Roman candle. Fourth and four, the Redskins are going. Caught by Monk. I don't know how he held on, but he did. Well, that was great, great pass protection because everyone know, knew that that had to be a pass. And all the pass rushers were going to be coming. And look at the time. Watch this pass protection. This is perfect. They try and get a stunt. Boom, there's nothing. They give him nothing. You see how Rippon can stand back there, step up, step up, step up. And watch what happens to Monk when he gets hit here. Boom, boom. He got spun halfway around. First and 10 at the 18. Finer to about the 16. Stopped by McMichael after a gain of two. He's been doing a good job for the Redskins. That is Jim Lachey, the big left tackle. He's drawn the toughest assignment in Richard Dent. And the tough thing to block Dent, of course, is is when it has to be passed and he's done that today this guy is you know has always been one of the the best offensive tackles in the league and he's playing outstanding here today second and eight flag on the play Even the uh, officials are wearing shields on their yokes. <laughs> Ball start on the quarterback. Ball start on the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. The penalty. You know, they put that NF shield everywhere now. You see it on the players' jerseys there. And now they got it on the officials. And I, think, I guess that they just want all the officials to remember what league they're officiating in. They've sort of got it off on the side, though, for further yeah. review. Yeah, but the, but the players have it right there, right below their neck. They call it the yoke. Second That's and the 13. the shield and the yoke. Finer inside the 20 to about maybe the 13, a gain of seven. Roper and Carrier. That's the thing that this Redskin offensive line now, you know, for years they call it the Hogs, and now I think it's based on those two tackles. Joe Jacoby, the right tackle, playing as well as he ever had, and number 66 over in there in the right, and number 79 over here in the left. Those are two pro tackles. Third down, Sanders, the motion man. Rippon has another one deflected. I think that's the most batted balls I've ever seen in one game. I think we're setting a record. I think we're setting a record here, at least at Soldier Field, for batted balls today in the history of the NFL. Rippon has had two. Harbaugh's had three. Flag in the end zone. Holding number 26 on the defense, five yard penalty, first down. Number 26 is the extra corner, John Mangum. We'll see him up there on top against Gary Clark. Yeah, you saw him. He grabbed his jersey. Still got and it. And then he grabbed it again. And then I think he was going to grab it again. I <laughs> think they could have got him for holding three times. That's one way to cover Gary Clark. First and goal at the nine. Liner right at the line of scrimmage by Rivera and Jones. No game. 
It was funny, we were talking to Joe Gibbs yesterday, and that was that counter tray that the Redskins just run there that they've been so famous for. And he says one thing, he said the Bears play that counter better than anyone. He says, we'll try it. I don't know how much we're going to run that tomorrow, and I can see why he's not running a lot today. Joe's all bundled up there. It's not that cold, I don't think. It is on that side. Oh, is it? It's like he's skiing at Aspen or something. Second and goal at the nine. Biner to the five. Mangum stopped him after a gain of four. Yeah, that Mangum will throw his body in there. He's only a little guy, I and mean, there's not much to him there. You see number 26 walking away there, and you have to hold and do stuff. He's only about 5'10", 170 pounds. When big guys come running at you, you got to just do whatever you can to get them down and grab them and hold them and trip them and kick them. And you almost couldn't see him walking away. Third and goal from the five. Left the shorts. Griffin. Come on. Touchdown. His second of the day. That was an amazing throw because he was getting a little pressure there at the end. And as he threw it to Monk, one, he had to see Monk, and two, he threw it, he threw it going away. Watch this. Monk is going to be over on his left. He's going to get a little pressure right there from Dent. And you see, he had to take his left foot and bring it back. So he had to see Monk and then let him out there perfectly. Of course, that's not very good coverage either. Low Miller's extra point is good. And it's 17-7. Monk has six catches, two touchdowns, 69 yards he's gained. Art Monk with two touchdown passes today from Rippon. Low Miller kickoff. Bailey watches it go out of bounds. He'll bring it to the 35. Let's watch a touchdown on the chalkboard. Now, Monk is going to be over all the way on the right side. And if you just watch him, he's going to come in motion here. We see him start in motion. Now, if we, if we just stop it right here, you see here's Monk here. Now, the cover guy has to come here. He just comes all the way, goes over here. And then as he goes in, they get lost up. And Monk ends up all by himself out here. See him out here? Now, you, you see what that movement does is when he starts to the outside, everyone goes with the inside guy, and no one goes with Monk. Monk scratching his head. Where were the guys that were supposed to go with me, he said. Clark thought they were with me. Why have I had such a good day? First down, Harbaugh back to throw. Hit by Stokes just as he tried to release it. You see, he's going to get the pressure here. He's looking downfield. And as he goes to step up, watch Stokes coming here. He almost got that ball out of there. The left tackle, Ron Mattis, hurt his, his ankle on that play or knee. You see him come out. So Stan Thomas will go back in at left tackle. Second and 10, the Viking. Look to be back on the right track. Dallas beating Green Bay in the fourth. You know, Sonny Jurgensen told me before the game, he said, if you look at the NFC quarterbacks playing now, intercepted by Gobea. I think he just threw that one up. He's been getting so much pressure that it. You, know, you get to a point that you get so much pressure that you just you, you just can't do anything anymore. It looked like Harbaugh just threw that one up there. I mean, here, here, what, you're coming off a play pass, and he's just going to take the sack there. He just throws that ball away. That's a terrible throw. I mean, he, he did have Anderson there, but he just looped that thing up there and let Govea get out there and get it. Redskins just inside the 10 now. First and goal. Hey, who's done the job here is this, is this Redskin defense. Haven't this Redskin they? defense has been 
very, very impressive. That's Finer down to about the six. Up by McMichael and Jones. And then the other part, after you take the Redskin defense, the other part is this Redskin offensive line because they have really controlled that defense of the Bears and given Mark Rippon time. Bill Bay was over there taking all the all the pats in the backs and everything. And the hugs. Second down, they're at about the seven. Gathered it and got about a yard. Maybe two. You know, these Redskins have so many ways to beat you. If, if the you know, if the if the running game doesn't go like it hasn't gone today, they have the passing game. If that doesn't go, they have the running game. And the only way they ever get stopped is kind of stopping themselves. Last week they had like four or five fumbles by, uh, by the quarterback. They had some exchange problems. Russ Grimm was playing in there. And they still have some of those things that will, will, will stop a drive once in a while. 434 left to play. Redskin timeout. They have two left as Rippon goes to check with Joe Gibbs. Atlanta Braves play the Pittsburgh Pirates. Third and goal. Ripping to throw it. Overthrows it. Intended for Sanders. And that was just good pass coverage here. He had two receivers, one just inside the goal line and Sanders deep. I think what he did is neither one of them were open. They were both covered well, and he just threw that ball away. So Low Miller with Jeff Rutledge holding from 23 yards out. And good again. 426 left to play. Redskins 20. Bears 7. You know, Chip Low Miller's been, been punting so well. John Brandis is the, the snapper. Jeff Rutledge is the holder. And they all work as a threesome. Now, now Brandis can snap that ball so that it comes in to Rutledge so that the, the laces are up. You see the laces are up, so you don't have to turn them. One thing you never want to give a kicker is the laces to kick. And Brandis is such a good snapper that he snaps it to Rutledge. And when he gets it, the laces are always up. And then when he puts them down, the laces are always away from Low Miller. And you never see any of that spinning that some holders have to do. Joe Gibbs. Looks like he's going to be 6-0 in 91, 4-1 when they won the Super Bowl in 87, 5-0 in 86, 4-1 when they lost in the Super Bowl in 83, and they won the Super Bowl in 82 when they started 4-1. So what that's saying is if they ever get off to a good start, they always go at least to the championship game. Bailey handles it about the 6. To the 20. You know, I always knew about the Redskins offense and their, you know, and their potent weapons and things they could do. But the thing that impressed me that is making this Redskin a real contender is, is their defense and their special teams. They have really improved in those two areas. Well, when George Allen was there, the special teams were always such a big part of the Redskins. Now Richie Pettibone's defense and the special teams and the offense and all those weapons. They're pretty tough. Yeah, I would I would think right now, just watching, putting all those things together, that right now that they have to be the best team in the NFC. As we talked about Richie Pettibone being the defensive coordinator, 
That's Wayne Severe. He's a special teams coach, and he's done he's done an excellent job. Wayne Severe goes all the way back with Joe Gibbs to San Diego State. Harbaugh's pass is complete to Wendell Davis. Caught by A.J. Johnson. No huddle. 11 yard game and another first down. Three and a half minutes left. Anderson. Anderson carried. Eight more. Stopped by Coleman. You're talking about the NFC, and you, you know, and you think of the the 49ers, the Giants, uh, both struggling after being the in the championship game last year, and then the New Orleans Saints up there. You can't count them out anyway. Wendell Davis, the intended receiver, Johnson back there with him. No flags. Even the fridge is trying to get a flag out there. I think it was double team. It looked like he just tripped out there. Hey, a, a, a good pass. He would have had a chance. There's no interference there. He he just tripped. That's a that's a clean play for the Redskins, but but he did have a step on him. Third down, Anderson. We'll have the first down and more down to about the 41 Monty Coleman. Three minutes now left just under. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League. This telecast intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS. The Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. Harbaugh going deep. He's got Waddle. That was a tough one there for Waddle because if that were in the open field, if he had some room, you would tell him never stop because when you when you dive, you have to stop. And he dove for that one, but he was running out of end zone. So he had a tough decision there. If he keeps his feet and runs through it, he's going to catch that ball out of the end zone. If he dives, you see, that's what you don't want him to do because when you dive, you stop running. But I think he probably had to dive because if he would have run through it, he would have run right through the end zone. Second down. Ron Morris, a spectacular effort. Sidney Johnson and Brad Edwards all over him. Watch this catch. That is knocked out. Then Morris goes for it again, dives with both hands, comes up with his left hand before it hits the ground. Then it's going to go out again, and then he grabs it again. That was a great catch. He grabbed that three times. It was hit. Watch it here. It's hit. It's knocked out. Now he's going to catch it again, and it's going to go out again. Then he's going to catch it for the third time, and that's a good catch. It's also a heck of an effort. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, a definition of stick to itiveness. Today's game was produced by Robert D. Stenner and directed by Sandy Grossman. The NFL Today produced by Eric Mann and directed by Duke Strzok. Senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer is Ted Shaker. First down Bears at the Redskin 27. Anderson to about the 25. Two minute warning. Wilbur Marshall tripped him up. Two minutes to play to the Redskins 20. The Bears 7. Two minutes left to play at Soldier Field Chicago. Washington 20. The Bears 7. Second and eight. Incomplete intended for Ron Morris right at the goal line. A.J. Johnson and Brad Edwards. 
the Redskin defenders. Yeah, Mike Ditka really has been calm. I don't know that maybe in the second half he's really never felt like they were in this game. With less than two minutes, they need they need a couple of scores here to win it. Bill Gibbs looks very confident over on the other side. Third down. Harbaugh incomplete intended for Anthony Morgan. There's Matt Millen. He's still fired up. You know, sometimes you need guys like Matt Millen on your team just to give you that that goofiness or that or, or that thing that you know I mean maybe it's not leadership it's a guy just marching back and forth and yelling and screaming and you know spit coming out of his mouth and making hits and stuff like that I think the 49ers miss that he stays fired up flag on the play uh, he said last night he said you got to get fired up and ready to roll <laughs> That sounds like something Ball Matt Millen would say. Number 84 on the offense prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. Reminder again next Sunday at 12:30 Eastern Time. It's the NFL Today first, then New Orleans at Philadelphia, and Phoenix at Minnesota. The Atlanta Falcons will go to San Francisco. That's a change because the Braves are in the baseball playoffs. And they'll reverse that on November 3rd. Fourth down. Harbaugh. Incomplete. Intended again for Morgan. You know, it's funny on that baseball note and changing the place, you, you would have expected that, but maybe the Giants. You would expect yeah. the Giants to be in so they can't play. As the Giants and the 49ers both play at Candlestick. You know, last week we just saw Wilbur Marshall there. Last week we had Roger Craig and Ronnie Lott playing against their old teammates of 49ers and winning and today we have Wilbur Marshall of course playing against his old teammates coming in here to Chicago and and beating them. That's the end of a day's work. That's what you do. Just kind of just empty it out. Empty out all the barrels. <laughs> Ernest Biner, the ball carrier. Don't forget again, coming up, the NFL Today, the post-game show. Scores and highlights. The Bears take this time out. I don't know what the Bears are taking a time out for. I guess they figure if they could get a quick 14, they can still win it. In a minute 40, that's going to be a long day's work. Look at Matt Millen there. The only thing wrong with Matt Millen is that number 57. I think that he should. That's a that's a bad number for him. I thought he should have had like a 50, a 51, a 52, a smaller number, a squarer number. 57 is too long. In fact, we talked about that when he went to the Redskins. He called one day and said, "What number should I get?" And I can't remember what number I said, but I know it wasn't 57. That's probably why he's wearing 57. But Matt Millen's a football player. I mean, he's just you know, a guy that enjoys it, loves it, plays it, plays it hard. Linebacker type has all those qualities. Always has. That's Viner again. Dante Jones made the stop. Two-yard gain. And out to the Bears again with a minute 35 left to play. There's a football player, too, Jay Hilgenberg. Yeah, they started putting man over him, and then then he had a little trouble. Then he started handling man, and then man stayed out there on the on the end where he belonged. Next Sunday on CBS, the undefeated Saints, off to their best start ever, take on Philadelphia. New Orleans' number one ranked defense is led by their fierce linebacker core, all of whom were selected for last year's All Madden team. Oh, oh yeah, my name is Pat. When I hear you, you say, "Hold down that." I'm leaning mean. 
Known as Rickman. Mess with me, things might get sticky. If you don't know me, my name is Vaughn. To outsmart me, you better get up before dawn. I'm the one and only Sam Mills. I cause so much pain, you'll need aspirin pills. To the Madden team, we all have something to add. But let our foes be warned, don't make us mad. They, they might make that team again. I know, and I wouldn't make those guys mad, but you know, I would like to take those guys and that guy right there, 84. That always makes you all mad now. I'd start out with that group of linebackers in number 84, and, and we'd go from there. One yard gain stopped by Perry. Those who made the playoffs last year, 1990, Redskins off to a great six and nothing start. New Orleans five and zero, oh, their best ever. Buffalo five and zero. Oh. Houston three and one. The Bears four and two now. Philadelphia three and two. Cincinnati, I guess the Giants and San Francisco would be the big disappointments. I think that's that's probably the biggest surprise. Is you know I mean Miami and Cincinnati and AFC two and three and zero oh and four. That's that's a surprise, but. San Francisco and, and the Giants were at the end of the year the two best teams in the NFL. They played in a championship game and now they're both two and three and maybe the best team in the NFL right now is this team we're watching today. Of course what happens right now isn't the important thing. Bailey will return Goodburn's punch. about the 43 stopped by Raven Caldwell 32 yard punt eight yard return Detroit making a little comeback now first and ten Bears ball at their own 43. No more timeouts. A minute, 21 seconds remain. Harbaugh off and running. Enough for a first down. 12-yard scramble stopped by Bobby Wilson. I think the game is kind of ending up the way it's been going the whole day, where either Harbaugh has been knocked down when he went back to pass, or he's been forced to scramble. Chased again. Pass almost picked off by Wilbur Marshall. Through his hands. Harbaugh has really made some bad passes today. I mean, he threw that one right to Wilbur Marshall. He threw one earlier to Gavea. I mean, this, you know, he's going to want to forget this day. I think Mike Ditka is going to want to forget it. Or Mike Ditka is going to want him to forget it. Or he's going to hope that Mike Ditka forgets it. Which is not going to happen. No, uh, uh, this this has not been a good day for Mike Ditka, Jim Harbaugh, or the Bears offense. Harbaugh almost has to run it again to Morris. Morris down to the 20. 40 seconds remaining. Andre Collins made the stop. Van Horn is down back at the original line of scrimmage. He's had a bad shoulder. Both of them, in fact, operated on during the offseason. You know, he's been holding a couple times today. He came out holding that left elbow. I don't know if he hurt that earlier and just kept playing or or what, but I saw him a couple times, you know, you know, come off and holding that left elbow. He's really done a pretty good job against Charles Mann today. You think of, you know, the times that that they got there and you know, man was over over the center, but you know, I mean, whether it's Stokes or whomever out here, Van Horn has done a pretty good job. But it does look like it's either his left elbow or his left shoulder. He's kind of an unheralded guy, yep. you know. That you know, when things go well, he really has never gotten. A lot of talk, but it's always been a, a very good and, and solid tackle. Right now he's a, a tackle in, in pain. Wojciechowski's taking his place. Thirty-eight 
Setting the clock back. It had run down to 22 seconds. Now they've set it back to 38. And ran again down to 34. <laughs> That's insubordination. I gotta do what I told you, he's saying. <laughs> Trying to get it. We'll get it right yet. You got it going the wrong way now. <laughs> nope. you know, one of the officials in this game, number 79, is Aaron Pointer, and he's the brother of the Pointer sisters. Oh. Waddle made the catch and paid for it as he was hit by Wilbur Marshall. Ten seconds left to play now. There was Aaron Pointer right there. Remember Wilbur Marshall was here and playing for the Bears and they had Singletary in the middle and Otis Wilson and Wilbur Marshall. I'll tell you that was one of the best sets of linebackers and hardest hitting linebackers that I'd ever seen that whole defense yeah remember we did like five or six games seven games at the end of the season we never saw a team score a touchdown right. against that 85 bear defense Harbaugh out of the pocket again Picked off by Wilbur Marshall after it bounced up into the air. So the Redskins improved the 6 and 0 on the year. Right now, let's send you again back to New York Studios and Greg Gumble. Six and zero oh on the year now. Welcome back to our studio in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw, and you were saying in your own little individual <laughs> power ratings that you figure the Washington Redskins is the best there is. Yeah, right now. you know they did something good today. They 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 shut down the Bears in the second half. All right, uh, Terry. Meanwhile, at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, the Detroit Lions have come from a 20 to three deficit to grab the lead now at 24 to 20. Let's join Jim Nance and Hank Stram at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, where the Detroit Lions now have a chance to take the lead in the Let's NFC Central forward. Division. Jim. We'd like to welcome those of you from around the nation. We have just witnessed an amazing comeback by the Lions. After a, a review of Barry Sanders 14 yard run for a touchdown stands and the Lions have scored three touchdowns in the last seven minutes. This is just great running. Fantastic running. Watch Barry Sanders. Look at him go through the cavity right up the middle. Look at him jump and jive and bake and shake or call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Look and go underneath. Underneath two would be tacklers and get the ball into the end zone somehow, some way. They reviewed it much like they did the Cap Boso touchdown for the Bears against the Jets. That one was overruled. This one, they say. Stands as a touchdown as the ball crossed the plane. A total collapse in the final. Half all right, Jim Nance, the uh, Minnesota Vikings, keep in mind, have uh, all three of their timeouts remaining, and the uh, clock shows about 36 seconds to play. Amazing thing about this game, Barry Sanders was held to 45 yards rushing in the first half and has broken loose in the second half. Yeah, well, that's what happens when, you, when you're committed to a running game. You never give up on it, especially when you have the premier running back in the NFL. That's Barry Sanders. Big second half. Lions really proven a lot today. Well, and Wayne Fonz has taken this team. Remember, he was defensive coordinator. His players loved him. He is considered a player's coach. And this player's coach and his team are very likely now to be atop the NFC Central by the end of the day. We'll take a time out and come right back.
And all of those of you who have been watching the Eagles in Tampa Bay, welcome to the post-game show. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw in uh, Tampa. You saw a comeback by the Tampa Bay Bucks for their first victory of the year. They beat the Philadelphia Eagles by a score of 14-13. to Brad Gable, kind of tough going early on, intercepted by Daryl Fullington, had a couple of passes picked off, which is typical of a rookie quarterback. Well, you, and you, you, you stare your receivers down. A young receiver, a quarterback will do that, and that's exactly what Gable was doing early. Meanwhile, Vinny Testaverde sacked right here by Wes Hopkins on the safety blitz, and Seth Joyner recovers for the touchdown. Vinny left the game with a chip fracture of his right thumb. On came Chris Chandler, and his start was rocky as well, intercepted by Hopkins. Now, this is just one of two interceptions that Chandler had in, uh, in replacing of uh, Vinny Testaverde. But crunch time. Here comes Chandler. Five-yard touchdown pass to number 84, Bruce Hill, and that is a big victory for the Tampa Bay Bucks, for Coach Richard Williamson, and also for uh, Chris Chandler, who insisted that he could do the job. Well, I'm, something good has happened here because now Tampa Bay is down to one starting quarterback, and that eliminates a lot of the pressure. Chandler will not have to look over his shoulder. With Testaverde now with a chip fracture on his throwing hand, he'll be down. You know, you got to figure four to six weeks. So Chandler now has this football team. It's his. That is a big plus for him. His number 7 of 11 for 109 yards and that winning touchdown as Tampa Bay gets into the victory column. The last NFC team without a win. They're now 1-5 and five with the win over the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, that is now a final score. The Detroit Lions trailed in this game at one point by a score of 20-3. to three. They scored three touchdowns in a seven-minute span to win it. Jerry Burns looking on early. He had the advantage. Darren Nelson from 11 yards out to break a scoring drop by the Vikings that went 11 quarters. And then the play action, Rich Gannon. Yeah, play action's great as long as there's no blitzes. If you have blitz, you're dead, but plenty of time for Gannon to find Jordan in the end zone. And then here comes Rodney Pete, 16-yard touchdown pass to Willie Green, 20-17, to and then Barry Sanders for 14 yards. This guy is amazing. Look how he stops, starts, gets going, gets into the end zone, and when you need it, he came through for you in the second half, and one of those green guys came through again, Willie Green, for the Lions. So the Chicago Bears, with their second loss of the season, the Detroit Lions go to 5-1 and one now, and they are the leaders in the NFC Central Division. Barry Sanders had 45 yards in the first half, ended up with 115, and the Lions are winners. We'll take a timeout and continue with more in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. The uh, Washington Redskins uh, keep their record perfect through six weeks of the NFL season. They beat the Chicago Bears today by a score of 20 to 7, and uh, a pretty good day for the Redskins and for quarterback Mark Rippon, who is standing by with John Madden. John? Yeah, Mark, that was uh, that was something. It seemed like early in the game, you guys were having a little trouble with pass protection. Then you started to roll, roll out to the right, and then your pass protection got under control. Well, I think they had an idea on uh, some types of the stunts that they were running. They were doing a lot of end tackle stunts on us. And a lot of times when you're in just straight drop back, those are hard things to pick up. So we decided to go to the rollout a little bit where they could just zone it off. And we had some success there. And I think it helped us uh, throughout the game. And then how about knowing that you could get Art Monk back there in the end zone? Now, the old man's still doing it. I tell you, he's amazing. Uh, he had about three or four big catches for us today. And uh, he continues it. And he's just He's just that type of a guy. He just works hard and, and a tribute to the game the way he plays. You know, we're looking at it right now, and, and you think that he's going to slow down sometimes, but the guy just seems to, you know, have, have everything that he's always had. Well, that's, that's what's amazing is when is he going to slow down? I haven't seen it yet since I've been here, and he was even quicker or, or the same when, he, when, uh, when I got here. So I think the, the, the bottom line is he continues doing it. He works hard. Okay, the and then the second one was when he came across in motion. Were you watching him all the way? No, we had a we, we, we scored on him last year on the same play. We hit Gary Clark on it on the slant route, and he jumped the slant route. Art got in behind, and so I looked at the, tried to look at the corner and see how he was playing it, and Art got in behind and just threw him a ball in the corner of the end zone. Well, congratulations to you and the Redskins, and thank Mark, and now back to you, Greg. Thanks, John. Thanks, Pat. All right, John and Mark Rippon, thanks very much. Boy, you talk about quarterbacks playing with confidence. Mark Rippon is doing the job to a T so far this season. The Redskins are 6-0. and oh. Right behind them, and as far as records are concerned, the Detroit Lions, who had quite a comeback this afternoon in Detroit. They beat the Minnesota Vikings by a score of 24-20, to 20, and quarterback Rodney Pete standing by along with Barry Sanders. Let's send you back to the Silver Dome and rejoin Jim Nance with Hank Stram. Jim? 
All right, Greg and Terry, thank you. An absolutely stunning afternoon at the Silverdome. The Lions come back in the final six minutes and 50 seconds with three touchdowns to overtake the Vikings 24 to 20 and run their win streak now to five in a row, taking over solo possession of first place in the NFC Central. Rodney and Barry, I tell you, I think many people are lost for words right now. Can you put this, Rodney, into words, how much this win means and how you can compare it to any other you've experienced? Uh, this is by far the uh, most impressive comeback I've ever been associated with. Just to, just to be in the huddle with those guys and have that never say die attitude. I mean, after we scored a touchdown to Robert Clark, uh, just gave us some momentum, gave us some life, and uh, we just came back. And you could just tell, I mean, I wish everybody could have been in that huddle because it was a look in everybody's eye like, hey, we're going to get this done no matter what the time was on the clock. Well, after the touchdown of 68 yards to Clark with 6.50 to go, the Lions recovered an onside kick. You came back, Rodney, and tell me about hitting Willie Green with a touchdown. Well, it was a situation where Willie said uh, he was beating his guy off the line, and, and it's what exactly happened. He beat his guy off the line. The safety was out of position, and we were able to, uh, to complete the touchdown. It, at first, I thought it was going to be too soft, and the safety was going to come over and make a play, but Willie went up and made a great play. That made it 20 to 17. Then the Detroit defense held, and uh, Barry Sanders, let me talk to you for a minute. How about for you, Barry? How does this win? rank with the ones you've experienced it feels great uh, it's probably the best we've done all season all all the time I've been here uh, just kept fighting and scratching uh, they played us hard played us tough the first of uh, the first half especially we just came out and, and didn't give up and that was the key Barry over 100 yards <clears throat> for the fourth straight game and here's the winning touchdown tell us about it from 14 yards out it was a draw play to the left uh, blocked them well it was an open scene to the, the back defensive backfield. All I had to do was beat one guy. It was Joey Browner. Uh, a couple guys got a hand on me, and I was able to get on in. Guys, before we let you go, this was not sold out today. There were many disbelievers even here in Michigan. What do you think now they're thinking? Any word for them? Well, what? Me, uh, <laughs> me personally, we, we can't uh, uh, really spend our time worrying about what other people think and whether they believe in us or not. We know we have the talent to go on and be in uh, postseason play, uh, and that's all that matters. All right, Barry Sanders and Rodney Peak, congratulations on what was really a miraculous comeback in the final 650 of this game. The Lions have won their fifth straight. Wayne Font savoring the moment as the Lions take over first alone. And let's go back now to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Jim, thanks very much. The Lions are on a roll. Do you think they want that bye week that they have coming up yeah, next week? Yeah, I'll tell you, isn't it nice? You know what they have going? Great defense, Jerry Ball on the nose. A quarterback really coming of age. Two young receivers, a great running back. I mean, they're doing it all, and they'll pack that stadium. It's okay. just a matter of time. All now. the scores and highlights coming right up. Stay tuned. year they ended up eight and eight they are off to a six and zero start again this year you'd have to think they're going to do a little better than they did in 1978 at the silver dome we've been telling you about the lions come back three touchdowns in a six minute 50 second span to come from 20 to three down to beat the minnesota vikings 24 to 20 and take over the lead in the nfc central division with a five and one record and uh, rodney pete 281 yards and two touchdowns in Tampa, the Bucks came from behind. They once trailed 13-0 to the Eagles, came back to beat Philadelphia by a score of 14-13. to The rookie, Brad Gable, starting and being intercepted by Daryl yeah, Pullington. This is what you expect. You know, a young guy doesn't see the underneath coverage as well, stares his receiver down. When he throws the football, you expect to have some interceptions. Vinny Testaverde started for the Bucks, had his problem. He's hit by Wes Hopkins here on the blitz, fumbles. Seth Joyner recovered in the end zone for the touchdown. Vinny left the game with a chip fracture of his right thumb. On came Chris Chandler, didn't start well. Wes Hopkins, two interceptions and a fumble recovery today. Picks him off right there, but then Chandler came back to get the game winner to Bruce Hill. When you play against Philadelphia and Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator, expect man coverage in the red zone. That's what they got. Hill gets inside on man coverage. No one's in the middle. Nice pass. Eagles with their uh, tough quarterback problems this year fall to three and three. Tampa Bay wins its first of the year in six tries. The Bucks are one and five with the 14-13 win over Philadelphia. In Milwaukee today, the Cowboys held on to beat the Green Bay Packers by a score of 20 to 17. Jimmy Johnson comes in looking for Dallas's first win in a long time against the Packers. And Troy Aikman got it started. Had just a wonderful game by Aikman. There you see Novacek who had a career day and now we're going to see the Packers come back.
Green Bay's number 88, Charles Wilson, on the second half kickoff, flies 82 yards for the touchdown, and Dallas's lead is 14 to 10. Then Don Mikowski with the injured shoulder, signals the play, and Blair Keel from 16 yards out for Sterling Sharp. Caught him in the blitz, caught the Cowboys in a blitz. You get inside, there's a quick slant. We saw that, that Tampa ran earlier to beat the Eagles. Now you see the uh, Packers come back to burn the Cowboys with it. Dallas's first win against Green Bay in seven years. Emmett Smith, 122 yards, and Troy Aikman had 286 yards and a touchdown as the Cowboys won it. We'll take a time, uh, time out here and uh, come back with more scores and highlights for you in just a moment. All right, Gumbel, Terry Bradshaw back in our studios. Let's continue the scoreboard. We'll take a look at uh, what's happening between the Giants and the Phoenix Cardinals. That game in the first quarter, the Giants with a lead 7-3, to three, and here's how the Giants scored their touchdown. Rodney Hampton, what a runner he's turning out That's to be, Terry. Good job. Well, it's, this play was designed outside, but Hampton saw he couldn't get outside, cut back inside, and got in the end zone. Greg Davis has a 52-yard field goal for the Cardinals at 7-3 to three, Giants. The Raiders are home to the San Diego Chargers. That game is scoreless in the first quarter. The Denver Broncos and the Houston Oilers Oilers came back with a vengeance from their week off after they lost to the New England Patriots. They are leading the Broncos by a score of 42 to 14, 28 points for the Houston Oilers off Denver turnovers. The Miami Dolphins beat the New England Patriots 20 to 10, and for the first time this season, Dan Marino went over 300 yards passing. He had 321 yards and two touchdowns in the victory as Miami goes to 3 and 3, and the Patriots are now 2 and 4. The Jets beat Cleveland today 17 to 14 to run their record to 3 and 3, and the New York Jets are one hot football team. On the halfback option, Blair Thomas comes through looking like a quarterback. Jerry. Well, if you've got a running back, then the defense has to respect the fact that he can run. But now all of a sudden, he's He's a passer, so this is a good call. Watch this play by Eric Metcalf. He thinks he's in the end zone. This is a kickoff, and he just kneels down and then just gets overrun. That's that's uh, called not being as alert. As, as I think alert. Alert, would, alert is the yeah, word. That yeah, that one covered not pretty quite good. as much as you can be. The uh, New York Jets win it by three, the final 17 to 14. But the Seahawks lead the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, in fact, defeated the Cincinnati Bengals by a score of 13 to seven. The Bengals are winless now in five games this season. And the NFL Today postgame show will continue in just a moment.